Hello everyone, my name is Mary Pierce Bale, and I have written a book about the dilemma of planet Pluto that was demoted to a dwarf planet. The title of my book is Oh No Pluto, and it was illustrated by Mariah Grace. It is a whimsical look at why our, our beloved planet was demoted to a dwarf planet. Prologue. When Pluto, then known as Planet X, was discovered in 1930, some astronomers disputed whether it met the scientific standards of the day to qualify as a true planet. For decades, astronomers debated as they continued to peer through their telescopes. Technology advanced and extremely powerful telescopes were developed and this allowed the astronomers to discover objects in space that were further and further away. One of those objects was object 2003 UB313, and it was larger than Pluto. This discovery by Caltech astronomer Mike Brown, along with others, inspired a peak of controversy. The International Astronomers Union was driven to establish the criteria for what constitutes a true planet at their meeting in Prague, the Czech Republic, in August 2003. The result was disastrous for Pluto. Little Pluto was no longer a planet. It must have been quite silly in the beginning of that school year. The science books used by the students had already been printed, showing drawings of the nine planets in the solar system. For many years, teachers often used a mnemonic device, a learning technique usually verbal, to help students remember the names of the nine planets. For example, my very excellent mother just sent us nine pizzas. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. From 2006 forward, teachers have had to come up with a new device or sentence to memorize the names of the remaining eight. Scientists and other astronomers will, of course, continue peering into the depths of space. Perhaps one day a new discovery will change our understanding of our solar home and once more upset the status quo. Science must be open to change. But for now, let us take a whimsical look at Pluto, the little ball of rock and ice that still sits way out there on the edge of our solar system and yet has caused so much controversy. Planet X. Planet Pluto was discovered has a distinguished history. In 1930, Pluto was discovered at the Lowell Observatory, founded by Percival Lowell at the turn of the 20th century. The observatory sits on a pine-covered hill above Flagstaff, Arizona, at very high altitude, just miles from outer space. At that time, there had been observed a mysterious object poking around Neptune's orbit, so Mr. Lowell commissioned a search for planet X through the lens of a telescope. At this time, people were needed to man the optical telescope. There were no computers to run the data. Young Clyde Tombaugh was given the task to look into space beyond the orbit of Neptune. In 1930, Clyde spotted planet X in a deep orbit in space, and it was declared planet number nine. There was much excitement at Lowell because it was the only planet discovered in the United States up to this time. An 11-year-old schoolgirl, Venita Burney from Oxford, England, suggested the name of Pluto because it was a cold, dark place. Most planets have Greek names, and in Greek mythology, Pluto was the Roman god of the underworld. On March 24, 1930, the members of Lowell agreed to name planet number nine Pluto. Was this name an ironic twist of fate for what was to lie ahead? No. The first two letters honor Percival Lowell, who predicted the planet's location. He passed away in 1916 and is revered at the Lowell Observatory to this day. But what is Pluto? Pluto has been around for some 4.5 billion years, and it has been doing its 248-year orbits for millennium after millennium. Now we know that Pluto had its place in the solar system, orbiting a whopping 
46,000, 240,000 miles from the sun. Later, astronomers discovered that Charon, a moon, revolved around the little dwarf planet as its companion. With better equipment, even more moons were found, dubbed Hydra and Nix. Pluto has an estimated 4,494 mile circumference and 136 trillion kilograms of mass. This is impressive for you or me, but it is pretty small compared to the other planets. Most of the dwarf planet consists of ice, nitrogen, and methane gas. Far out in space, Pluto appears as light brown with a tint of yellow. The sun is very bright, is a very bright star, which makes Pluto a mellow fellow. Pluto and Charon revol revolve around each other, so it was suggested that they be called Plutons. In order to rec reclassify Pluto, those astronomers were creating a new category of scientific nouns. Oh no, Pluto! It has an irregular orbit and is small in size to be planet number nine. Some astronomers st stated around Pluto's discovery time. Since they first turned their eyes to the night sky, astronomers have peered through telescopes in search of some glimpse into the wonders of space. It was only a matter of time before Caltech astronomer Mike Brown discovered object 2003, UB313, that was further from the sun and more importantly, larger than Pluto. This led to the culmination of the controversy over what constitutes a planet. Originally, in Greek, the word planet meant wandering star. Recent discoveries have led astronomers to create a new definition of a planet. When the International Astronomers Union met in Prague in August 2006, their main task was to establish criteria that space objects must meet once and for all to be considered a planet. A planet must orbit the sun, be big enough for gravity to squash it into a spherical shape like a ball, and it needs to clear other things out of the neighborhood of its own orbit. What to do? But what about Pluto? Pluto doesn't fit the new planetary criteria. The IAU designed a process to assign borderline objects like Pluto into the dwarf planets category. Other small bodies like asteroids and comets were placed into the smaller solar system bodies category. Pluto might not be a true planet, but it fits perfectly as a dwarf planet. It is also a trans-Neptunian object because it has an eccentric orbit which crosses paths with Neptune's. Even further past Pluto's furthest point, thousands of icy bodies form the collection of objects known as the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a vast ring-shaped cloud of frozen rocks, comets, and space debris. Pluto is a massive object in the Kuiper Belt. So the astronomers created the trans-Neptunian objects category and proposed Pluto as the prototype. It is amazing that Pluto, this small celestial body, could cause so much hype. Double Dwarf Dare. So for decades, Pluto hung out in space with his planet buddies doing his orbit thing until that not a planet larger object 2003 UB31 was discovered by astronomer Mike Brown that would cause quite a zinc. Pluto was regarded as a planet by the general population worldwide, but the question of Pluto's planet status has always been debated by professional astronomers. There just wasn't any evidence that Pluto was anything other than a planet. The discovery of 2003 UB313 a larger than Pluto Kuiper belt object reignited the debate about whether Pluto was a true planet. This scientific find changed Pluto's classification and it lost its planet number nine status. Pluto fans were disheartened 
at what felt like a loss. In honor of the controversy, the newly discovered celestial ice rock 2003UB313 was christened Eris after the Greek goddess of strife and chaos. Its moon was named Dysonomia, which means spirit of lawlessness. Eris is larger than Pluto in width by 70 miles. Pluto retained its moons Hydra and Nyx, but its other moon, Charon, was now classified as a dwarf planet, orbiting in tandem with Pluto. Two planets orbiting each other are called a double planet, so Pluto and Charon are double dwarf planets. They say that five times best. Pluto is out. On August 24, 2006, the IAU took a vote. On the scientific evidence, Pluto got a unanimous demote. Is dwarfing a planet a new idea? Not really. Sort of. Stars have been characterized similarly, ranking from the enormous supergiants to the itty bitty dwarf stars. This sort of category was modified to more precisely organize our planetary objects. Unfortunately, due to new guidelines to qualify as a planet, demotion was something Pluto could not avoid. Pluto was almost classified as a plutoid. New research presented by Professor Brown and Caltech graduate student Emily Shelley claims Pluto isn't even the largest dwarf planet and that Eris is Pluto's twin. Eris is pudgier with more mass while Pluto is puny and thin. How can we see Pluto from Earth? Al Shefali, a member of the Colorado Springs Astronomical Society says of Pluto, it is something fairly unique. It is worth giving Pluto an extra peek. Though Pluto cannot be seen with the naked eye, you can look through a high powered stealth telescope to find it in the night sky. Because Pluto is so far away and small, how can anyone even see it? With a telescope in clear weather, anyone in the Northern Hemisphere can find the little dot of light that is Pluto. Usually, August is a good time for a Pluto view when you do some summer stargazing. Pluto sits about 35 degrees south above the horizon. From the sun, its distance is quite far, so to many it looks like a twinkling star. A historical moment. At the Lowell Observatory, there is a Pluto walk that resembles a path through the solar system. Here, each inch equals a million miles in space. It leads to the telescope where Pluto was discovered and this puts a smile on the astronomer's face. There will be more research done with Lowell's new telescope that may lead to further groundbreaking discoveries. The future is exciting and filled with possibilities. According to Observatory Director Bob Millis, the Kuiper Belt is the solar system's new frontier. Millis encourages, nothing is changed about Pluto. It is still a remarkable little world. Scientific discoveries will continue to help us understand just how wonderful and complex things are in the world and beyond. What to visit Pluto? There is a town of Pluto an hour southwest of Fort Worth, Texas, far away from everything. Surrounded by farmland, the town has been around since the 1800s. Like the planet, the soil was too rocky to grow crops so the little town didn't prosper, and a lot of folks moved away. Cattle and horses now outnumber the people. Like Pluto in space, this little town is far off from its neighbors, small and rocky. But in Texas, it is far from icy, and unlike Pluto in space, in Pluto, Texas, Venus is only a 30-minute drive away. But the people who live in Pluto have kingship with a planet whose name they share. Pluto is a lonely spot, a tiny dot on a map in the middle of nowhere. Susanna Crockerham says, but that's the way we like it. We don't want to be close to everything. 
Pluto has its own special place, just like the planet way out there, vast in its own space. Ah, but with knowing smiles, the residents say, for us, Venus is only a 30 minute drive away. And then I'm doing that. Fun facts. Since 1930, when Pluto was discovered, astronomers have found more than 250 exoplanets or planets orbiting a star other than our sun. As noted by planetary scientist Jonathan Lunine of the University of Arizona, Tucson, we can now say there are stars like the sun that have many worlds around them. Astronomers are discovering multi-planet systems outside our solar system with strange and wonderful environments. One such is the distant fluffy world of HT, HAT P 1. It is dubbed the largest and least dense of the puffy planets that consist of hydrogen and helium, often referred to as gaseous giants like Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. Pluto may not be a planet anymore, but Pluto, Pluto itself hasn't changed. It didn't get kicked out of the solar home, just given a new and rather unique classification. Pluto will always be the beloved outcast of our solar system's family. Saturn and Jupiter have moons that classify as dwarf planets. California, Illinois, and New Mexico still recognize Pluto as planet number nine. Pluto's orbital year lasts 248 of Earth's. It takes 248 of our years for Pluto to circle the sun in its elliptical orbit. Nine planets, how could you remember? For generations, school children memorized the names of the nine planets by their position in the solar system calculated in miles from the sun. Sentences such as, my very excited mom just sent us nine pumpkins. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Help students learn the planet's names in a way that was fun. Can you compose your own mnemonic device to learn the names of the eight planets in order calculated in miles from the sun? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. I've got one more. Into the future. NASA launched a spacecraft, New Horizons, January 19, 2006, atop the Atlas V rocket headed for Pluto. Because it is still a fascinating place for study, it will take many years to arrive at Pluto. This spacecraft travels 35,000 miles per hour and 10 miles per second. It is the fastest traveling spacecraft. New Horizons should reach Pluto in July 2015 and will get the first close-up images of its surface. The spacecraft is packed with seven scientific experiments to study Pluto's atmosphere. In another galaxy nicknamed Baby Boom, astronomers have found that the region is making an average of 4,000 stars every year. That is more than 100 times the number of stars produced in our Milky Way galaxy. Lobel, by Lowell Observatory's star tales. How many planets will astronomers discover there? I hope you've enjoyed this story and the interesting facts that you will find in this book. Enjoy Oh No Pluto. The Space Certification Program highlights companies and products that promote space technologies and space awareness. Space technology is all around us and enhances nearly every portion of our daily lives, from entertainment to recreation, from healthcare to communication, from our sunglasses to our mattresses, all have space technology that directly benefited from our space exploration. Our other certified products promote space awareness through encouraging the interest in the cosmos and space science. All are a part of our certification program. To learn more about our program and our products, visit us at www.spacecertification.org.